private automation engineer uh, at a financial institution at the moment, overseeing uh, Python implementation of uh, enterprise level network automation stuff. I uh, used to be a system engineer at an aerospace company where his code served over a million passengers a year. Uh, and he likes to experiment <coughs> in his spare time with various system admin tasks uh, using Python, which is what today's talk is going to be all about. Um, he's also co chair of PyCon Malaysia this year, um, which is when? 25th and 26th August this year. So if you do have some interesting papers, CFP, please submit. We do need a lot of speakers to come to Malaysia to speak. Yeah, and without further ado then. Um, yes, uh, hi guys, I'm James. As you mentioned, I heard about it. Um, I used to be a system engineer, right now I'm an automation engineer. And I like to experience quite a lot of interesting things. And this is what the talk's about for the day. Uh, not much coding, it has been a long day. So I um, um, can guarantee that there's not much of code that you need to have your brains to think about it. So this is why. So the talks is about a uh, toy problem that I actually used uh, when I was still in my ex company, Rocky.com. If you heard about it, it's a Wi-Fi on board company that sells uh, Wi-Fi to Asia.com. So if you heard about it, so this is a toy problem. So here comes a problem that I have in my daily life. What does concurrency means to me? Automation engineers, a husband and a father of two who two of them are still always crying each other you know up and down so you can't predict any anyhow when they're crying or when anytime okay so this was is going to be my talk for the day it's talking about how I get to the point of designing the toy problems what are the hurdles and then how I tackle it or how I design it and of course comes with a demo first thing of course, so this is all I have. Okay, now here comes this is what happens during the day uh, in my S office when I got really boring with the thing. So I decided to print a paper to read. And I still remember that the paper was uh, something called, uh, uh, I think it's General Adversaries Network. I'm trying to understand deep learning. But when I'm trying to print the paper, I found that the I mean had changed the printer. So I got no driver, I can't print. So there's two, only two outcomes that I can ask for my admin. So say, okay, you have this model of printer and it's an old printer and it has only Windows driver. Sadly, I'm using a Linux laptop. So it's quite difficult for me to print because there's only two things that you can do. You wait for the community to submit for the drivers or you ask your colleagues to print for you. The outcome is quite sad. So after I came back from uh, PyCon APAC, I was quite motivated because during the talk, during the keynote talk, one of the, uh, one of the keynote speakers mentioned about that a programmer should have the power to change. You should have the power to code the system that you want. So I say, okay, might just give it a try. So I decided to come up with a decision. Two decisions that I can make from that. One thing is, I write my own printer driver. But here comes the things. If you want to have a quick solutions, you find that understanding PCL, which is what you call as printer command language versus PostScript can be quite tedious because it deals with quite a lot of bytecodes and I'm not really an expert on that. Okay, here comes the second solution. Can we just write a very simple client and server solution? And this is what I'm going to talk about for today. So the server and client solution is pretty much quite simple. So setting up Windows, VM, I install a printer drivers, and then I use my laptop, code my own Python client, and then I talk through the queue. So whatever it is, I send my files, metadata, I upload my files to the Windows servers, and then I'll print from there. But again, things are not that trivial. Why? Okay, this is what I have for the architectures. So you might have one to have a look. This is what I have. So here comes the hurdles that I have. Okay, workaround is okay, but there's an issue with it. It's a multi-single traded programs. 
meaning that right now you have one process in Linux, you have clients on the Linux machine, while you have another uh, servers on the Windows Print server. And one thing is that I have to upload my files through the NFS server on the Windows. So setting up uh, NFS servers or set, setting up an NFS client has not been easy on Windows 2012. By the way, uh, you didn't realize that there's NFS servers on Windows 2012. No one knows that, but I did find out that there is such a thing of NFS server on Windows 12. So can we improve that? Because setting up an NFS server is pretty much quite difficult. You have to get through the rules with the Linux. You have to talk to, uh, you have to make your Windows talk to the Linux servers. You have to do some configuration to match to it. So it is not very easy. So can we improve that? Yes, there's a way that we can improve that. So there's something I remember when I talked to my friend who is really good in code, uh, coding PHP. And he mentioned that why don't we just write a simple web app and upload the files through the web app. Okay, now here comes another problem to me again. Okay, when you upload this thing, how are you going to communicate with your Windows Print server? Okay, and that's a, my question on that. Can we run both together? Okay, if you want to run both together, you have to deal with one word. And some of you smile that concurrency. And this is uh, a picture that I borrowed from Ellen. Not simple, again, concurrency. But when you speak to somebody who knows Python about concurrency, there's one word that you come out with, and you're always scared to talk about it. G I L. Global Interpreter Lock. As what uh, our dear friends uh, Wilson have mentioned about it, it's pretty much quite headed, and no one wants to talk about it. And even our master David Basler also mentioned that you never ever talks about G I L. But if that is the case, why trading still exists in Python? So I decided to give a look on it and try and understand what actually is GIL. Okay, so like what our dear friends uh, Wilson mentioned about it, GIL is nothing but just a uh, mutual locks that prevents two concurrent proce process to write into the same memory space. Okay, and you try to prevent the data racing or you call that racing condition and the reason for that is due to the way that C pythons which is not a trade safe so as you can see from the demo this morning you find that writing a trading code might not run as efficient as the multi-processing or even a single traded programs you can see that this morning with with demo of that so if GIL is an issue over there can we still use it or can we still improve the process? That's the word that we have. And what is the purpose of Python 2.3, Python 3, keeping that, the modules till now? Is there that we can work on that thing? So that's our question over there, okay? Pretty much we have uh, asked ourselves. And of course, the last question that we can ask about that, if GI is a problem over there, can we eliminate that? So the answer is quite sad. All of them are no, except for is there any way that we can tame GIL? So the way the, my answers to taming the GIL will be, it really depends on what you want to use it. Certainly, if you want trying to run a parallel coding, it is not quite good at this. Okay, that reminds me of one uh, very famous physics law, which is called the third law for thermodynamics. So if you are fans of physics, if you probably know this. It means one thing. It means there's no system that can go down as low as absolute zero. By means absolute zero means zero K, which is minus 273 Celsius. There's nothing that you can go be below that. It's because due to the nature law of physics. Now, going through all the way down here, things are getting very passive, first thing, and of course, a pessimistic. Is that there's nothing that we can do with the presence of this. Now, there's paper that I'd like to read. I uh, uh, still have this paper in my uh, computers till now. It's a paper that's written back in 2023 
from what I've left that, uh, I'm actually thinking I was going there, but I think I'm not quite yet qualified for that. It's one of the MIT lab which managed to cool the system down to a fraction of 500 milo, uh, pico Kelvin, which means is zero times 12 zeros in bound five, meaning that it's really low, which close to absolute zeros. Okay, so that gives me an idea with that. If we cannot prevent GIL, why don't we just live with it and try to see how we can work on that part? and how we can utilize even though there's a present of GRL, okay? So that's how, how what we can uh, come up with one thing, okay? What we want to do with it. So I'm also a Golang coder, um, not quite good compared to Python, but it gives me an idea. CSP, what does CSP do? CSP means communication sequential process. The underlying process of it, the underlying models of it is very simple. It means one thing, build a queue, build a channel to communicate between two three things process. So there's one word for road pipe or rubber pipe. It say that do not communicating by sharing the memories because when you share memories, you create race condition, which is not good. Instead, share memories by communicating. Meaning that right now, you communicate the trick, the tricks with a channel, okay? So for those who are, uh, who are who's, uh, uh, Golang coders, probably you heard about this word, channels, channels, channels. But do we have the same concept in Python? Do we have the same concept? Now, things getting optimistic right now. Yes, we do have something in Python, which is what we call SQ. And this is why this morning I asked about a question to Wilson about the queue. How can you utilize the queue as a channel in terms of the CSP model? Okay, so I'm going to give you ideas. How many of you know this cartoon? Okay, not many. Okay, uh, by the way, they have a female version for, for the movie. So if you have, yeah. So it's the same thing. Uh, this was my, uh, the cartoon that I like a lot. And simply because, uh, Three of them are physicists who is not doing very well, and then they decided to uh, turn themselves into a Ghostbuster. Okay, so I'm going to give you a very uh, simple ideas on how we actually can use the ideas of trading. Okay, just in case you don't have any ideas of what is trading in this way, so I'm going to post it in a while. Okay, so this is one thing. This is just a code demo. So four Ghostbusters are reporting themselves and wait for a while, they'll be loaded into, uh, can you see at the back? Can we yeah. increase the uh, Okay. Can we increase this? Okay, maybe I'll just pull really up there. Okay, Sally, uh, no, I, I have no idea how I can make this bigger. Okay, so this is how a very simple trading would means. Now the ideas of this code means that right now four Ghostbusters are reporting themselves and then that each of them will load themselves into Ito One. By the way, Ito One is the Ghostbuster car. Okay, Ito One. So this is one thing that we can do with that. And next comes to another demo on Ghostbusters as well, which is the concept of the queue. So, concept of a queue, uh, how many of you used queue before in Python? How many of you? Uh, not, not many, actually. Okay, now queue is a data structure that happens in Python, which is, I find it very useful in a way that uh, it can cater for both uh, first in, first out, last in, first out priority, and you can code this thing easily everywhere, which I, I like it very much. So there's a demo as well for this Ghostbuster, Ghostbuster is that the catch goes and load it into a trap. Okay, so this is how I can do it from here. Now I'm going to show you that demo as well. Okay, 
so it start a little bit slower so it catches the ghost okay wait for a while they have completed their missions and then right now you're loading the ghost into the containment unit so all these are done through queue okay load the things into the queue and then you retrieve the things from the queue now by doing this the advantage of it is what uh, we can do is we can prevent the race conditions you won't be bothered about whether they're going to write to the same memories and whether two of the tracks will be competing with each other by means you just load the things in into the queue and then when it is done when it is on join you can uh, retrieve the data out from the queue without worrying whether there's anything on the race condition so that's the interesting part of it okay okay now back to the questions how can we implement this concept of a queue into our design over here or into my toy problem over here in printing so first thing the pros, uh, the flows will be in such the clients will upload the file using an HTTP post loads the data into the queue the server receives the metadata from the queue as well as the HTTP post and after that you send the jobs to the printer simple okay now you might ask a question over that uh, okay do you use queue into your code Sally no because I want something quick so I'll just use Redis as my queue server which is easy to code and they have a uh, Python has an API for that so I just use it from there so sorry I don't have a demo for the queue somewhere but I just use something that is quick and handy okay this is uh, architectures that we have right now for it okay same thing as what we have just now the Linux laptop we send the metadata back to the Redis you upload the files to the Windows servers and they'll do the print over there okay now you might ask one question over there how does Windows handles the print from the Python there okay and of course this uh, doesn't come to our mind because quite numbers of us are coding in Linux environment and not many of us are coding in Windows environment so luckily I found something which is called Windows API and it allows us to execute the sh shell through Python okay so what can do that can do open a notepad that can do a print so as long as you provide the uh, correct parameters they can print the documents for you okay so this is our internals okay and there's one interesting thing that I would like to show you from that is uh, I think I haven't seen quite a lot of people doing it is the part on the main over there where how you can make treating runnings together with the flux so normally what we do for the flux application is that we just put a web, when we have a main over there we just keep it as apps dot runs and then that's the, how we host the uh, web applications but right now what I did from that is I'll let my trading process which is my print process to be part of a daemon I run it first and then I'll run the <coughs> flux applications okay so this is a one of the video demos that I'm going to show you on this is the first version of my printing that I've done in the lab okay so it's a quite a short movie uh, video over there Okay, first thing, uh, this is uh, the update, the one over there um, is the Windows Server and this actually is the client. So this is uh, printing from my computers over there for my terminal and that was the uh, VM that set on one of the servers behind it. So as you can see again, I think this is done. No. Okay, maybe I'll show it in a while. So as you can see, when I send the printing over there, through the HTTP post, you send again, you send straight away to the Windows servers. And from there, Windows servers will pick up and then it will print. It will send a message to you and tells you, oh, okay, it will print the message. Maybe I'll show this again. So as you can see from there, there's one PDF over there and it sends the 
PDF file to the print servers. So it prints. Okay, so quick and handy. So manage to solve the problems for that. Okay, now uh, how much time do I have? Still have, or is this still long? Oh, 20 minutes. Okay, that's long enough. Okay, uh, note before, not really before end, but uh, a note that you might want to have a look on that is I actually have this on the GitHub, but for the new features that I'm going to show you later, uh, I'm still writing a test case for that, so not yet available, but I'm trying my best to load it hopefully by today or tomorrow. Okay. And for the new version of it, it has more features. It, well, I actually added more on the security as well uh, as how to interact with the users. Okay, so new features, security, and of course, uh, login of the users uh, in terms of the SQL database. Now, since I have more time on it, perhaps maybe a little bit demo. Okay, uh, just a note from that, uh, I actually coded this demo last night uh, no this morning 12 at 12 30 simply because uh, when i load it to another virtual machine it crashed so i have no choice but i have to load to uh, open bsd how many of you know open bsd how many oh great okay four so i loaded to this uh open bsd i installed python 3 which is quite a uh, difficult things for open bsd simply uh, some issue with it but managed to get through it okay so this is how i'm going to show you on the demo simple virtual machines that runs OpenBSD so just in case to show you that I'm not bluffing it is an OpenBSD okay I'm not about bluffing it is an OpenBSD okay so for here this is a Windows print servers running right now as you can see I've been testing this quite a number of times I still find the bugs over that this is a process that runs in the background right now. Okay, so I'm going to send a printing over. Hopefully, Murphy Law doesn't work. Oops. I have something for you guys. Okay, let's see. It works. Okay, so in a while so you're going to see something happens on the screen. Yes. Okay. So I did send my documents to the printing, and it shows. And this is the printer that I think I managed to bring it. I can't bring a physical printer for you guys to see. So I decided to download a PDF printer so that it demos and it shows that it does run. So again, yes, uh, okay, too many items. Yes, it does print, okay? So let's save what it says from message over here. So we save and we open it. Okay, yes, this is what I have over there. Okay, so it prints. So it solves the issues of printing and we don't even need to write a printer driver just to cater for this. We can use a very simple client and server models to cater that. I mean, we, we are all Pythonista. Why we want to go to, down to something that is really difficult, why we have something easier that we can deal with. Okay, so this is what I have. Uh, and to be honest, I feel very thrilled about this because the, met the approach was so simple that we don't even need to go down somewhere that's really difficult, which make ourselves in a very uh, difficult way. Okay, so this is one of the demo. And again, there's one thing that I would like to show you as well. Okay. By all means, this is part of a application. So if you can register that, you can register yourself. Uh, I've been done this for, let's say, Tim Cook is my employee. I'm going to throw him into, let's say, logistic. I uh, know. Okay, 
logistic. Okay. And he's huh? Why you why you register yourself with Team Cook? <laughs> well, I hope Team Cook can be my. Well, I hope Team Cook. That's why I compute the whole system with like. Yeah. I can do with Mac, but I'm gonna use a Mac name. Well, who knows? Some days it can be my employee. <laughs> okay. Uh, a. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Okay. Now, that's the best part of the uh, system over there is that. When you register yourself, it comes up with a key and right now this system has been enhanced with the security where you can only talk to the printer or to the servers using an access key. So without this uh, access key over there, there's no way that you can talk to the printer. Now the videos that I showed you uh, previously is that you can talk to the system without an access token. But right now with this version, you can talk to this, you can only talk to the system with the access code there's no way that you can do the way okay and another thing about this is that you can't lie to the systems where i have a print lock so let's say uh okay let's say i'll just use my id a simple id on that okay it tells you what you print okay it locks everything so let's say if this is really a production system, that means when your HR or any, anyone comes to you and asks, Hey James, how many papers have you printed? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I think you have printed 20 pages and this is not allowed. You have been printing more than what we actually provide to you. And this is how you can show to me. Okay, this is, a, and even it comes with the timestamp that you print. And of course, I've been doing a, quite a task testing of that. And this is why we have been all these files. Okay, so this is what I have it for things. Okay, so I think that's all for my presentation. Any questions that you like to ask? It's a, more on the story sharing rather than you know technical things. Yes, questions. Yeah. Uh, what's the, what did you <coughs> Flux or uh, flux. So, um, how does that server cause the printer itself? That connection. Good questions. And this is part of the keywords that I, I posted on one of the slides over there. We use a queue server. So, you, you need to have some sort of queue over there. And in this case, what we use as a queue is the ready server. So, what I'll do in the process over there, I, I, I don't mind showing you the code. So in this process of where interesting part of it is when you do Okay. 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 So in the same print job over there, what I actually do, and one thing is that, yep, this is what I have over there. I send two things. I send two process to the printer. I send a JSON data, which is on the file itself, and the credentials, as well as the file that I want to print, as well as one thing that I'll send uh, when everything, credentials, the files upload, everything is correct, then I'll send the metadata all the way to the printers yeah so this is this is the highlight over here i'll send the meta, um, file metadata so for the server side itself this is the server and then it will pick up okay print file over here will pick up the files metadata from the ready server <coughs> So that means the printer reads on Reddit too. So you're yes. using it as a channel. Yes, that's, that's the concept of that channel. So that's why I use Redis, uh, Redis server as the channel yeah. to pick the file metadata so that I can, uh, I'll know where is the location of my file and what is the type of my file to print. So I've not seen printers that read Python. So uh, uh, how does the printer... Good questions. 
uh, and I knew you, you're going to ask this question. Okay, now this is the part uh, uh, dig out quite numbers of it, and I'm I have a worries over that, which uh, because this is uh, Win32 API. I'm not too sure who coded it, and apparently it's quite handy for you to work with Windows uh, API. It is exactly the same type of API, even the functions and the methods are the same as what you have in C++. So if you know the parameters for the Windows API, you can interact with the Windows uh, system itself. So this, these are the two uh, tools <coughs> package that I can find. So uh, if you go to my, uh, hopefully by tomorrow, if you go to my GitHub, you're going to see this uh, requirements file. So you just need to run that and in, you will install whatever Windows uh, necessary uh, modules or package into your Python system when it runs on the Windows. Yeah, uh, any questions? Yes, about Tinku? <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, the OS stop command or sys stop command doesn't work. Sys stop. Why, why you must use the... Uh, with the API. Does the normal, uh, is it called OS.com CME or high open all the stuff? Uh, I tried before. Uh, one thing for the OS, I, 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 I think I understand what you're trying to say. OS stock system when you're trying to put that, but the question over that is where can you find the print commands on Linux uh, PowerShell? Yeah. Linux. Yes. Oh, yes. Let's say you want to run a CMD or those how can you find a print command? But for Linux system, it's very pretty much quite easy. You just type in uh, LP print or LPF. I can't remember the command some some there, and then you straight away prints for you. Yeah, but there's no such thing as what you can find in Windows. So I decided to find a way. I say, okay, now if this is the case, then why don't we just use a shell script, a Windows shell scripts to do a print on the file itself, so that it can talk to the necessary uh, let's say in this case is Adobe PDF and then you send the print jobs via the Adobe PDF yeah this is this is how I do it from there good question uh, actually I have that problem as well but uh, since you mentioned it the trick behind this uh, trading is that I run it as the daemon so I bypass that. So this is what I show you on, on the process of the, uh, on the slide on what I call as a Pico Kelvin. Because if GRL is a problem of that and you can't stop the trading over there, why don't you just get to another channel by putting a daemon over there? Because for those coming from the Linux, you know multi-trading quite well. It spawns like uh, Nginx, Apache, it spawns multiple uh, child process. And one thing on that, uh, uh, you also fork the thing into a daemon so that it can be a service services. And luckily for all this thing to be true, and luckily the reason for me to be to be standing here presenting to you guys is because there's a daemon. Without daemon, this is not going to work. So if you can check from the uh, trading over there, there's something called daemon. And once you run the daemon, it can do exactly as the thing with what you can see over here. Any questions from the floor? Yes. Um, with this work, instead of building the whole system, it just simply have one last app that will just basically take capture Windows command and convert it to a API port. Yes, you're right. Directly without presence to anything like that. So the print API. Uh, well, if I can manage to find the printer's API, that would be good. I'll just send a REST API and then your prints for itself. But Sally. Nowadays, uh, companies range printer, and then most most of the time, the printer that you get is a very old printer. So there's no way that you can run the a REST API to send a command. I would love to. I mean, uh, writing a request is way much easier compared to coding down this Win32 API, where you have no idea what does this, what all these par parameters means. So this is why. Well, thank God for that. I don't need to even uh, play around with all the PCL commands on that. Yeah, so I still find it easier in terms of coding in this way. Any question from the floor? Okay. 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 Uh, I hope you guys found fascinating with the way. Uh, but the the, uh, the conclusion of that is, being assist, I mean, try to be as creative as you are.
there's always a uh, different solutions don't squeeze yourself in a box which is, which is a box that so small that you can't fit yourself try and jump out in the box and you see the things differently thank you very much okay. thank you, very much. Thank you. Uh,